Okay, everyone, now that we've learned a little bit about the elements of art and principles of design, you are going to go on a scavenger hunt to find some examples of these principles of design using the elements of art in your home or around you. So in your Google Classroom assignment, you will find this template. And what I would do is take my sketchbook, go to the very back in the sketching pages, and just copy these boxes. And when you're finished with your pictures that you're drawing, label them based on these elements of art and principles of design. So let's start with my example here. The first box will ask you to show space using balance or to show balance using space rather. So we know that space is a big area and sometimes it's a landscape or sometimes it's just objects the way that they're arranged in your picture showing things that are closer and farther away. So what I'm asking you to do is use space to show balance. So remember, we know that balance can be three different things. It can be symmetrical, that means same on both sides of the picture. Asymmetrical, meaning something is not the same as the other side or it can be radial, where something is the same all the way around in a circle. So I am drawing a landscape that I can see outside of my window, and what I am doing is I'm using asymmetrical balance. So in my picture, if I was to make a line down the middle, it's not the same on both sides. You can see that the tree is very large, and there is no tree on the other side. So this is asymmetrical. It's very heavy with lines over here, and not so heavy over here. So I'm showing asymmetrical balance and I'm showing a big area of space. Next, it says draw something that uses value to show contrast. So we know that value is, it has to do with color. It's, it's the difference between light and dark colors. We know that contrast is basically just the difference between something and something else. So I'm using color contrast and I'm using value. So I was looking for something that showed different types of value, light and dark. So I found a window in my house that was shining into a dark room. So this is showing value because the window is very light, the room is very dark. It's showing contrast because of the contrast between the light and the dark. Next, draw something that uses color to show pattern. So this is something that I just kind of used for my imagination. I didn't actually find this, but I was thinking about maybe something from nature that has a color pattern on it, like a bumblebee. So remember, a pattern is when something repeats. I'm trying to show a color pattern. So on a bumblebee, it has the yellow, black, yellow, black pattern on the back. So I decided to show that type of pattern using that color scheme. All right, next. Draw something that uses lines to show movement. So this might be a tricky one for some of you because when you look out into your house or outside, you might not see movement right away. So an artist has to kind of use their imagination to show the illusion of movement. So one way you can do that is with lines. So I'm just using these little sketchy figures that are moving in different ways. And obviously you can tell they're moving because their body is positioned in a way in which it looks like they're moving. But I'm adding some special curved lines around them. These are called movement lines. And when an artist uses those movement lines, it kind of shows the illusion that the person is moving even more. So try and think of a way that you can use lines to show movement. Next, draw something that uses forms to show proportion. So we know that forms are not just shapes. They're actually more three-dimensional. They have many sides. Sometimes they're rounded. And proportion is the relationship of size to something else. So remember, we looked at realistic proportion and not realistic proportion. You can show either realistic or not realistic proportion. So if you're going to show realistic proportion, try and just draw some objects from your house try and arrange them next to each other and try and draw them how they really look, the size relationship between one object and the next. That's what I did here. Or you can use your imagination and you can come up with an unrealistic proportion picture, kind of like the example we saw with the people on the beach. All right, next, draw something that uses shapes to show unity or variety. 
you get to choose unity or variety. Remember, unity is when things are the same together. Variety is when you have a lot of different things in the picture. So I was looking around my house and I found some interesting shapes in these flowers. There were many flowers that were the same in the same flower pot. So I'm showing unity, the same shapes repeated over and over in the picture with the flowers. All right, finally, draw something that uses texture to show emphasis. Remember, emphasis is when I want something to stand out in my picture. I want it to be the center of attention. So I tried to find some interesting textures. And what I did is I decided to put these leaves up against this brick wall. And what I'm doing here is I'm making the leaves stand out because they are very smooth compared to the rough brick wall. They're also in the middle of my picture, so I'm using placement to make them stand out even more. All right, so those are my seven examples. It's up to you to either look around your house and find some examples or come up with some examples from your imagination. When you're finished with these pictures, upload these pictures by taking a picture with your Chromebook and upload the picture to your Google Drive and submit that picture of your final seven boxes to your Google Classroom week two assignment. All right, I can't wait to see what you come up with.